The 417 Gamers is a group of board, tabletop, and card gamers in the 417 area code. This is the podcast. Welcome to the 417 Gamer Podcast, episode 15, the expansion episode. The 4 and the 417 Gamers is Andrea and I looking at some of the things we've enjoyed or looking forward to in the 417 area. Our one topic of the week, we review Ori Calcum. Publisher is Pandasaurus Games. Do we like it? I don't know. Stay tuned. And in the seven for our expansion, we're right next to the holidays. What are seven things that Andrea and I look forward to for the Christmas season? Let's get into the 417 Gamer Podcast. Welcome to the 417 Gamers. My name is Rick. And I'm Andrea. And this is the podcast. I love how you paused before your name. Yeah. You did. I it did. made me laugh. Aw. <laughs> um, in the 4, in the 417 Gamers, we talk about four things. Uh, this one, we're talking about four things we've enjoyed or are looking forward to in the 417 area. And we just got us a new puppy. Yes, we did. The bestest boy. Uh, Barry, and I don't know the rest of his name. Did, did you register his name? I haven't yet. I think I'm going to go with a very good boy. A very good boy. He was named after Barry Allen the Flash. He's a Bernese Mountain Dog, so he's not the fastest. So he's not the Flash. But Barry Allen is kind of funny and goofy. And our dog is very funny. And lovable. And lovable. And goofy. But, uh, I want to say it's like the second weekend of December. He had a weekend of getting just spoiled. We took him over to a friend's house. They foster animals now and again, and they have some nice dogs. You got to meet them, got to play with the, with the squeaky toys, got some sharing. We also got some uh, manners taught. We did. Which we thought was very important for him. Yes. He's going to be a, he's a Bernese Mountain Dog. He's going to be close to three digits in weight. And before he gets much bigger, we wanted to make sure that other dogs that are well-mannered showed him the rope, so to speak. Yeah, no jumping, no biting, Mm -hmm. get off me, you know. Yep. When to drop it, you drop it. When to sit, you sit. Yes. We're learning. He's a puppy. Um, The very next day, we were going to an event that had a Santa Claus. But before we did that, we stopped off at a Bronx to get us a, a tea. And they offer pup cones, so he got his little pup cone, thought that was great. And then we went to South Side of Springfield is a boarding and... Uh, uh, training. Training called Paws and Claws. And they had a holiday event where they had a gentleman, or they had a Santa Claus for, for animals that you could pose your animal there for free and they just ask if you maybe give a donation to their shelter <laughs> i think they they shelter as well as board as well as do obedience uh they were they were super sweet to him as soon as he got in there there was a, a dog that looked like a miniature uh, uh, german, german shepherd, shepherd almost yeah and who was getting all the lovins until barry walked in the door and all of the staff turned around and started giving him lovins which did not make the, the, the German Shepherd puppy very happy. He started barking at that point. He's like, mm-hmm. hey, I, I had all the lovins. <laughs> so Barry got another pup cup from them and some doggo treats. And we went on a, a, a little tour of their facility. And Barry got to look and sniff all those and all the dogs that were out and about that would come up to the gate and so he yeah. could sniff them and got a picture with Santa Claus. Adorable pictures. It was some adorable pictures. I'll probably try and post those on the, the Instagram if you follow uh, the Hobby Gaming Network. And on the way home, there is a restaurant on the east side of town right in front of Sam's Wholesale Club. It is Cafe Cubano. And he makes one of the best Cubans in town. <clears throat> what he also makes is... He makes really good breakfast sandwiches and breakfast burritos. He makes like a souffléed egg that is tastes great, and then he uses thick cut bacon, and I think the Tillamook cheddar that's uh, sharper. But on top of that, he's a doggo lover as well. 
We get to the window. He's got a big order that he's finishing up. Some sandwiches for another customer on the inside of the restaurant. He sees Barry in the back seat, and he he said, he asked us if uh, Barry could have a treat, and we said absolutely. So he gave Barry a treat, and he said, "Give me a minute. I got to finish up with this customer, then I'll come back and get your guys' order." Well, in the meantime, while he was taking care of that. Barry's, Barry was getting restless and started whining and, and started barking a little bit. So he came back to the window and goes, I didn't forget about you. I'll give you another treat. Give me a minute. So he was super kind, super sweet to the dog. And we got breakfast sandwiches, which I feel like was the most important thing because I think it was like 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and he does the breakfast sandwiches all day long. And that was a plus for me because, like I said, thick-cut bacon, Tillamook cheddar, and the egg souffle that tastes really good. Uh, Kitty, I love you, but I can't have you climbing on me while we're podcasting. Keep moving. Uh, uh, uh. So Barry had a really good time. I enjoyed watching the puppers get spoiled. He had a great day. It's uh, been a while since we've had a dog. We've had a lot of pent-up love to give. We have. And he's very much a puppy, and he gets into stuff, and... Chews on things that we don't necessarily want him to chew, but we'll get there. Andrea, one thing that you enjoyed or are looking forward to in the 417 area? I enjoyed our trip to see the Bagwell Lights. Yeah. We go every year, and this year we were able to go on a Tuesday night, which um, if you guys are going to go see it, we recommend a Monday or Tuesday yeah. because the closer you get to the weekend, the longer the lines are. As a matter of fact, we drove by there tonight and there was quite the line. Yeah, we just drove down, down Battlefield Road and Battlefield turning into Luster and Stewart were backed up and crazy. <laughs> but it's totally worth it. Um, new songs, new uh, displays this year. Um, last year he had a lot of inflatables. This year he had some more of the classic plastic and yeah, he's figurines. Back on the inflatables this year. Yeah. Focus more on lights, more on um, his digital board. I think we, he might have had one blow over last year. So they are the inflatables when it gets windy are not the best. They are not well. They're not the best, but I mean, he's also changing it up. He right. kept on adding, 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 and now he has enough stuff that he can start rotating. Yeah, so it's a different display every year. But if you're in the Springfield area, it's just off of a Battlefield in Glenstone at 2000 East, mm -hmm. 2008 East Cambridge. You can see it from Battlefield. Yeah, you can see the tops of the trees because he's got icicle lights that trickle down. Yeah. And when you get on there, uh, you'll have a sign at the front or back of Cambridge. That'll have a note for you to turn your radio station. And he's got music synced up to his lights. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, Andrea, do you got one more? Um, well, I am very grateful and thankful for this year. We were able to finish our Christmas shopping before Black Friday, which was the first time we've ever been able to do that yeah and i am a fan <laughs> right we have before waited for the black friday sales which yes there are some good sales but that extra 10 20 percent you might save financially for me was worth it to remove the stress of the waiting until the last minute is it going to be sold out so we were able to throughout the year um get a lot of um we got a lot of games this year um for our gifts right and we kind of scaled it back because i think last year during our gift giving tip one was not all of your family members necessarily want games so try and get something that they want but after we didn't give games last year my brother-in-law wanted a game. My sister won an expansion to one of her games we got uh -huh. her a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, they wanted us to maybe get a game that their daughter, Jana, could play. Family weight games. And then uh, we got a couple small card games for my parents because they don't have room, nor do they want the big box games. But a small card game like Illusion uh -huh. or Spot It. Yeah. Or what's another good little card game that we've been playing? Scout. Yeah. Scout's fantastic. So those five little, crowns. Five crowns. 
that's that was really nice. In I have no problem with you know you do you on on the Black Friday shopping, but it was really nice coming into Thanksgiving. You had that weight off the shoulders, and mm-hmm. all we had to do was cook the the Thanksgiving dinner. It's going right. and be like, hey, Friday we're gonna do Black Gaming Friday, and we don't have to do anything. And that's if we right. see something extra, great. But otherwise, right. for all intents and purposes, we're done. It was. I really enjoyed that, and I think yeah. we should make that our our tradition. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is it's going for just a a little more time. This is the Gardens Aglow. It's the Japanese stroll garden mm-hmm. at the Nathaniel Green Botanical Garden, yes. uh, west side of Springfield. It's off of Scenic. Uh, the Gardens Aglow is they put Christmas lights all through the Japanese stroll garden. It costs $5 in advance online or $7 at the gate. It's got more than 200,000 festive lights that go across the garden that are on on the trees. They're on the the, the bridges and walkways. De- decorations. Yep. And then they also have some sculptures that they bring in, some of the wire sculptures that have lights to them. Mm-hmm. On, on top of that, they also have some uh, vendors that have come in. So they've got... Uh, snow nut mini donuts. They've got a hand popped kettle corn vendor. Somebody that does churros. Somebody that does uh, it's called sweet pieces. I think this is just a candy vendor. I don't know until we yeah. go there. But we've gone to this a couple years, and it's always a good time. We love Christmas lights, of course. But the Gardens Aglow, they go um, basically Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They started on uh, Black Friday. And they go until uh, December 31st. New Year's Eve will be the last night of the Gardens of Glow event. You can go on to uh, peacethroughpeople.org to get more uh, details and buy your and give you links to tickets. But if you can make it out, we definitely highly recommend it. Yep. So those are four things that we have enjoyed or are looking forward to in the 417 area. Andrea, I think we reviewed a game. We did review a game. Uh, Ori Calcum. Let's, uh, let's see what we thought of that. Ori Calcum is a game published by Pandasaurus Games, designed by Bruna Catala and Johan Gupi. The artist on this is Paul Mayfon. In Ori Calcum, a tense and fast-paced strategy game similar to a short 4X game is held. Each player has their own island board to explore and develop. On a turn, they choose a set of a, a one exploration tile and an action card. They can recruit hoplites, produce precious Ori Calcum, which is a legendary metal from Greek mythology. Construct buildings, granting powerful bonuses, or try and get rid of monsters infesting their islands. Uh, to prevail, they will need to erect majestic temples, forge orichalcum tokens, or win the favors of the Titans. The first one to get five points will win orichalcum. Andrea, we look at five different criteria when we grade these games. The P is? Presentation. How it looks on the shelf and how it looks on the table. Uh, the the next one will be components. How nice the tiles feel. How well do they hold up through multiple game sessions? Mm-hmm. And how is that rule book? Is it easy to get through or is it a slog? Uh, G is gameplay, which is pretty uh, explanatory. Is it fun? Is it uh, intuitive? Is it you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, T is theme. Is does the theme kind of evoke itself in the game? Does it feel pasted on? Could it be anything? And is it theme that draws you into the game? Then we have it factor. How much do you want to play that game? Andrea, the presentation. What do you think of Ori Calcum? Well, that's probably um, where I would rate it the highest. Yeah. Um, it's got a pretty good looking box. The um, the the there are big cards. Um, for the Titans. Mm-hmm. The monsters are, are pretty good. You've got little stand-up pieces um, that represent the monsters, and there are several different ones. Um, yeah, I think that 
and, and it's got that that patchwork tiling pieces too um so there's a lot going on uh, presentation wise that make it pretty eye-catching yes and that's is probably where i'm gonna score it the highest i i'm right there with you i think the box looks great on the shelf it the box makes you want to pull it off i'm like oh what's that mm -hmm. i and you know one of our friendly local game stores had to call it mm -hmm. uh, various you know things in life happen so i picked this on the shelf at you know as they were going and i hate to see them see them go silver twilight was good peoples mm -hmm. but i uh, picked this up glad i picked it up because it was a fun little game mm -hmm. and on the table it looks really good too yeah. like you said uh there is that tile laying aspect where you're putting pieces on there but the tiles look nice and interesting yeah. mm -hmm. Uh, you have uh, dice that you roll against the monsters when you fight them. They're nice and chunky. Mm -hmm. And that was my favorite part of the game, yeah. fighting the monsters. So everything looks nice on the table. It dr And people come over, hey, what's that? Mm -hmm. And that, you know, as a gamer, you know, yeah, this, this is my new game. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go four and a quarter. Yeah, uh, me too. Okay. I'm right there with you. Uh, components. This is another high one. Mm -hmm. The cards are oversized cards that tell you what actions you're going to take. Mm -hmm. The um, tiles you're going to put on your board are, as, they're kind of like circles that are kind of webbed together. <laughs> they're all in a straight line. They're, they're like either one circle, two circle, three circle. Yeah. And when you draft those, you're going to put them on your player board. All the player boards are good size. Mm -hmm. I've kind of been, what is it, cheapened or un, unspoiled or my <laughs> expectations lowered. With some of these games where you get your player boards and they're super, super thin and mm -hmm. disappointing. Yeah. And some of those games is because, you know, you've got multiple player boards. This one, they gave you a folding, thick, double-sided player board. Then, like you said, the monsters in the standees. The rule book was easy to get through, and mm -hmm. I was very appreciative of that. I think Panasaurus has really st stepped up their rule writing and and i know a lot of this is translations for whenever they bring the game's mm -hmm. over from europe rule book was really easy to get through yeah. on this one so what were your thoughts on components um yeah i really uh, i'm a big fan um the dice have this little skull on it that's an insta kill um which you think oh that'll overpower the game no because when you're rolling three four even five dice you still can't get the thing to come up <laughs> <laughs> um but it's so that makes it even more exciting when it does finally pop up um but yeah no i and en i enjoy the components of this game i'd give it a i'd give it a, a four four point oh Okay, you're at a 4.0. Uh, I'm at a 4.0 as well. Gameplay. The gameplay. Yeah, this is where it pulled me down a little bit. And I think it's it's very samey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All your turns are the same. And there are so many of the turns. It's like... Th and this is where... If it was a shorter game, if you only had to have two or three points to win, I think I would have enjoyed it more. Yeah. But it just seems like it just took forever. And that stays its welcome for what it is. And I'm just... And you can get almost there, and one of your points can be through, um, say, getting a Titan. Yeah. And then someone else gets the qualifications and they can take it away from you. And you're like, oh, no, I was almost there. Um, which... it is something that happens in other games, but I wish it hadn't happened in this game because the time, I mean, we were playing one game and another table was playing or bar Jerris and was playing or mm -hmm. and we were done with our heavier game yeah. before they were of this easier game. And so that's where our, I, it has that <sighs> aspect that munchkin and flux both have towards that take that uh, screw over the person that's on top mm. and everybody keeps on pulling that person down which for some people like that gameplay and if that mm. if that sings to you where you have that king of the hill mentality that's yeah. what this has at the end mm -hmm. it is very easy to see who has the lead or or the bead on to that win mm -hmm. And it's pretty easy, if you can, how to hate draft around them to keep them from it. Yeah. If that you know, speaks to you, by all means, this might still be up your alley. Right. 
But I'm I'm right there with you. After we played this three or four times, and we played it, uh, we played it at three, four. Did we play it at two? I think we learned it at two. We learned it at two. We played it at three. We played it at four, more than once. Yeah. And I'm just. It was okay, but it wasn't. Yeah, I'm great. glad we got to play it. Yeah, love I the am, art, love the components. Uh, the, and there are parts of the game that I really did enjoy. And if somebody had it and wanted wanted to play it, I wouldn't turn it down necessarily. Sure. Yeah. But it doesn't need to be in in our collection. Yeah. So I'm at a, I'm at a three. Yeah. Same here. Gotcha. The theme the theme to me, mm. it's fine. Yeah. It, it's Greek. It's it's the Titans. You're forging coins. You're uh, building the temples. Mm-hmm. Uh, back in the gameplay, I, what I didn't say is um, the the way to win is you need five points. You can gain the favor of a titan that'll give you a win, and unless you have a power that says otherwise, you can only have one favor of a titan at a time. Otherwise, you have to forge uh, coins with Ori Calcum, and you have to have five pieces, take the build action to forge a coin, or if you have on your board, you have uh, four different pieces of terrain that are in a diamond shape, you can then forge a temple with the build action. Mm-hmm. Once you've done five points of that in any combination of having a titan, building temples, and forging coins, game ends. Game ends immediately. Somebody's get that fifth point. Mm-hmm. So like we said, there was that king of the hill mentality. Theme-wise, I'm pretty sure you could have themed this in just about any other, you know, mm-hmm. land grab. Yeah. And... and so, and the theme doesn't really speak to me. You know, I'm, I'm more of the, when it's Greek mythology, to me, it's the Greek gods. Mm-hmm. The, the little monsters you fight, there is some Hydra, there is Cerberus, there is right. some, you know. But they could have been any kind of monster. It didn't matter. They could have been Norse. It didn't affect the game at all. It didn't tie to your tiles. It didn't tie to your board. It was just a monster. You, I, 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 honestly, I didn't even look at some of the monsters beyond to see how many points it took to kill it. Yep. And what it granted you when it was done. Right. Uh, So for theme for me, I'm at a 2.75. And I know it feels a little harsh, but that's where I'm at. No, I'm a 2.5 because there are parts of the game that I didn't feel fit together very well. Like, you've got these titans, but you've got to put your grasslands together to match up to get it. I don't know. It just didn't seem to go. Didn't go for you? Yeah. That brings us to it factor, and I think we've kind of already uh, telegraphed what we're feeling on this one. Yeah. Um. You l- let's go with your it factor first. Uh, I'll go two point two five. It had some good ports to it, and you know, I, and I wouldn't turn down playing it again if someone asked me to. Um, but I'm not just dying to play it again. I'm at the same, but I'm going to keep it at a two point seven five because, like I said. If they wanted to play it again, I absolutely would. I would play this over several other games. Mm -hmm. But I think we had, you know, we had enough of the take that mentality from other people to where we were like, eh, I've seen what this does. Mm -hmm. And I'm over it. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, we graded out of the five criteria. Our totals, Andrea and I both had 4.25s on presentation. Component rulebook, we were both at fours. Uh, gameplay, Andrew was at a three, uh, uh, let me get my gameplay chance there, I was also at a three, theme, Andrew is at a 2.25, I was at a 2.75, come on, uh, and then it factor, Andrew is at a 2.25, and I'm at a 2.75, no, that's wrong, there we go. So that puts Andrea's total at 16, mine at 16.75. The final score, Andrea, your grade for Ori Calcum is 64. Mm. Mine is 67. Yeah. It's a good looking game. If you like drafting, if you like some take, if you like some of that King of the Hill mentality where you yeah. pull somebody back and you like that little bit of tension, mm-hmm. you might really like this game. But if that little bit of tension where you think the game should be over, you might you might go around this game. Yeah. So that's Ori Calcum. Thanks for listening. Let's go on to the next segment. The seven in the four one seven gamer podcast is our favorite seven in a 
given category. And for this expansion, it's Christmas time. What are the seven foods around the Christmas season that you look forward to the most? Or maybe it just doesn't feel like Christmas unless you've had it. Mm-hmm. Andrea, why don't you start us off with number seven? Um, For me, it would be <laughs> Christmas morning, family tradition, ham and waffles. Ham and waffles. Christmas morning. Because normally for Christmas Eve, we'll have ham. Uh-huh. And then for Christmas Day, we have turkey. But for Christmas morning, leftover ham and waffles. So good. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, For me, number seven is eggnog. I need one glass of eggnog and then I'm done. <laughs> and and it, a lot of time it sucks because it's the whole carton. That carton's like three or four glasses. Mm-hmm. And I do like one glass. But once I've had my glass of eggnog, I'm done. And it doesn't, doesn't matter if there's alcohol or if it's not. Mm-hmm. I just want one. Yeah. Um, my number six is sugar cookies. I don't care if it has icing or sprinkles. I need some sugar cookies at some point during, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, mm-hmm. I need some sugar cookies. Yeah. Um, mine would be candy canes. Ooh. I am not a big mint person. I don't no, like not. I don't like mint chocolate chip. Anything that has is normal and they add mint to it, I'm like, why wow, you've ruined it. One of our first date spots was uh, Van Gogh's and I got the mint tea and you went, Ew. I'm like, oh, what did I do? And you're like, No, it's all right. I forgive you. <laughs> um but for Christmas uh-huh. I would like at least one candy. You will mint a little bit around Christmas time. Yes. Um, one of our leaner Christmases, uh-huh. um, we hung a bunch of candy canes on the tree um, instead of ornaments. Um, and so while we were unwrapping presents, we would eat our candy canes. So it has that definite tie in there. Number five. Uh, number five for me, cranberry sauce. I know a lot of people associate that with Thanksgiving. Um, but like I said, we would have turkey on Christmas and the cranberry sauce, not something I eat any other time of year, Yeah, you know, but that you gotta, you gotta have it. For me, it's the cranberry walnut bagel from Panera. And, and I, I, I'm most of the year I either get the crunch or I get the uh, Asiago cheese. Mm-hmm. But during the, the Thanksgiving and Christmas season, at least once I want the cranberry walnut bagel. Mm. Nice. Um, let's see here. That's a big... Uh, one other one. A bagel? Oh, um, the Vienna sausages and barbecue sauce. <laughs> it's always at, at somebody's, at somebody's Christmas, Christmas party. At somebody's Christmas party, yep. And if, if I notice by the time we get past, like, the Super Bowl and I've not had the little Smokies mm-hmm. in, in the barbecue sauce... I'm disappointed. I'm like, (laughs) where was it? It's almost guaranteed that at a party (laughs) or a Super Bowl or Christmas, you're going to have Little Smokies. Right. And if I don't, I I, I missed. Mm -hmm. It's a missed opportunity. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, Number four for you. Uh, Number four for me. (laughs) Um, The Little... Hershey's Kisses in the wrappers for Christmas. Mm -hmm. The little red and green um, Christmas Kisses. Uh, I I don't usually eat uh, Kisses Mm -hmm. uh, throughout the year, but every time at Christmas, I always get some and keep them at my desk. Um, And that way, everybody who walks by can get one. Um, But I don't know, just because they're in the little uh, red and green wrappers, I think they taste a little more Christmassy. Number three. Uh, number three for me would be hot chocolate. Um, n- not something I drink a lot of, but around the holidays, I crave it. Yeah. Um, with a couple little marshmallows on top. I think an evening of being home, cuddled up in a blanket, watching Christmas movies, hot chocolate, just puts its icing on top. Uh, for me, banana pudding. Mm. Uh, my mom usually makes banana pudding for either thanksgiving or christmas and if i haven't had banana pudding by the time both have rolled around i'll make my own banana pudding <laughs> and i know you're probably saying well why don't you go go make your own banana pudding 
It's different when your mom makes it. Of course. Or, or you have that certain family member. Remember, it might not necessarily be your mom. It might be your aunt. It might be mm-hmm. your, you know, might be somebody else in your family. Right. But most, a lot of people have that one person in their group that makes, and maybe it's not banana pudding mm-hmm. for you, but for me it's banana pudding. Um. So for me, it's not the Hershey Kiss. It's, I think it's either the hugs or maybe it's the white chocolate kiss that has the peppermints embedded in them. Mm, the, I the ones do that they like my mint and I do <laughs> like those. And I have to watch myself because if I buy a bag to share at the office, I don't share it. <laughs> I have the intention to share it. Of course, of course. But that, that sucker, it, it, like, hey, did you get a bag of Hershey kisses or mm-hmm. hugs? Nope. <laughs> What's that bag there? Nothing. I just brought it in from the car to throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your number two? Pecan pie. Ooh. Pecan? Pecan? Pecan pie. Either way, I'll yeah. eat it. And it has to be just traditional straight, no no chocolate pecan or, or uh, casserole. No, this has to be regular pecan pie. Pecan, caro syrup. My pie family's show. recipe. Gotcha. Number but will you eat just about any pecan pie? I'll take a bite or two. Yeah. I'll try That's it. That's a pecan pie person. <laughs> See, um, I'm a pumpkin pie person, but I'm very picky. I'm, right. We found out that Costco makes a pumpkin pie that I thought was pretty fantastic for store-bought. It is pretty fantastic. But just about every other store I've ever had it either does too much spice, mm-hmm. way too much sugar, no sugar, yeah. horrible crust... Or some combination therein to where I'm like, this is terrible. I, I I don't see why people, you know, I understand mm. if you don't have family members that can cook. Yeah. But I just like, I just, you know, either I, I've made pumpkin pie. I made really good pumpkin pie. <laughs> <laughs> I made pumpkin pie so good that kids cried. Because they couldn't have it. I know. <laughs> I love that story. But, <sighs> but yeah, <sighs> pumpkin pie for me. Is completely different than when I see people that love their pecan pie. Mm-hmm. I see people that love pecan pie to get the little bitty hand pie at the gr- at the gas station. Yeah, You're like what are you doing? I haven't had pecan pie in a couple months. It's April. I know. <laughs> I haven't had pecan pie since like February. Right. And I need one. I'm like that's not how pumpkin pie works. Mm-hmm. I, I wait until the season, then I get my couple of pumpkin, pumpkin pies, and then I'm done. Yeah. So that was, uh, you were at number two as a pecan pie, and I did my little rant. Your number one. My number one that it has to feel like Christmas is caramel coated popcorn. Every year, someone is going to be given at those popcorn tins <laughs> with, yeah. with, with the different flavors of popcorn. And, Cheese, uh, butter pie, and uh, got caramel. Right. And the caramel is my favorite. And it's just every year I'm going to have it. I know I am. I'm not going to eat it any other time of year. But at Christmas, someone's given a tin of popcorn and I'm going to get some. I got yelled at one year for taking the divider out. Oh, <gasps> You took the divider out? Yeah. What the kind of monster does that? Because I like all three. Oh. And I like them together sometimes. Oh, well then mix it in your own bowl. Well, I mixed it in the can. <laughs> took out the divider. And then when I got in trouble for that, I shook it up. <laughs> uh, so we're, all this is sweets except for the cranberry bagel and, and the little smokies. Because my last one is cheesecake. Mm. Usually either for my birthday or for Christmas, we get cheesecakes. Now, my brother-in-law also loves, my mom makes these little bitty bite-sized cheesecakes yeah. that go in muffin cups. Right. And my mom makes them every Christmas for him now. And now I'm just like, yeah, mom, you should make him. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And then we t- we eat them. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I love cherry cheesecake. I like cheesecake, period. Right. And and, and I guess cheesecake might be my pecan pie. Because ah. I will eat even bad cheesecake. I'm like, all right, I'll have a little bit. <laughs> like, this is New York style cheesecake. So it's just dry. No, it's just store bought. <laughs> Because I've had somebody make a New York style cheesecake and mm. it was really good. Yes. But then I've had store bought 
New York style cheesecake, and you're just like, this is just dry. I even like just the the Jello make it cold at your house with the graham cracker crust yep. cheesecake is good. I will take that in a heartbeat. Yeah. So those are seven things that Andrea and I look forward to around the holidays, and mm-hmm. it just doesn't quite feel like the holidays unless we've had them, maybe. Or, or maybe it's just something we look forward to. <laughs> or both. But we'd like to say Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all the people in the 417 Gamers of friends and families. And uh, maybe stay tuned. We might have something after this. I don't know. Oh, I think we will. Will we? Yes. But other than that, we will catch you January 10th. We're going to try and do our favorite games from 2023 in January. We'll talk about our New Year's resolutions and how we did and, and then make new ones. As you do. As you do. And we'll talk about our favorite seven games. And we played enough games from this year in the expansion. I think we'll do our top eight through 14. So we'll do another seven of our yes. favorite games. And we're going to try and uh, see if we can finagle Ben to come back on like he did last year. But until then, we'll see you again. Merry Christmas. Merry and Christmas. And happy holidays. Goodbye. The 417 Gamer Podcast was recorded and produced by Rick Bagwell and Andrea Smith. The music we use, Kind, Gentle, Beautiful Person, and Making Up for Lost Time was created by Origami Replica. For links to the music and our show notes, head over to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash hobby gaming network. If you would like to game in the 417, head over to Facebook to facebook.com forward slash 417 gamers. Click the join You get to the group and see all of the great times we have and all the places we play. But until then, keep gaming in the 417. So, one year ago, you and I uh did a our first review mm-hmm. for Savannah Park published by Capstone Games and their family line and this is by I've got the box over here bear with me for a second this is by Wolfgang Kramer and Michael Keesling this plays one to four players it's for ages eight and up and it takes about 20 to 40 minutes yes uh, this game is themed at everybody has their own little Savannah Park mm-hmm. you put animal tiles on them. But fires have erupted, and now you need to move the animals around and save them. And on your turn, one person will declare a tile that they're going to move, and everybody has to move that tile. When you move the tile, you'll flip it face down, and then everybody keep on doing that until the end of the game, all the tiles have been moved. At that point, you're going to get points. At first, any solitary animal that's next to a solitary fire runs away. Any dual fire uh, runs any two animals away that are on tiles and the triple fire Mm -hmm. runs triple animals away then any grass spaces you have open are worth a point apiece every tree space you have open is worth three points apiece and then the animals you're going to get points based on your best herd and Mm -hmm. that's going to be number of animals multiplied by how many watering holes are on those tiles that they're on Mm -hmm. And your herd is the the ones that are orth, that are uh, adjacent but on a side. They're yeah. uh, hex, hexagonal tiles. Yes. So I did a quick summary. I'm not going to go in a whole lot. If you want to go back one year to our December 22 episode where we reviewed it, Andrea, just just go back uh, down real quick. Uh, presentation. What, what do you think of Savannah Park a year later? Um, on a scale of one to 10, I say one to three, four, one to five, one to five. Yes. Uh, what I say, that's what I meant. Yeah. Uh, I'll give it a, a 3.75, 3.75 presentation. I love the tiles, all yeah. that stuff. I'm going to go 3.5. Uh, that brings us to components. You, you've had a year to stew over the components. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't remember what I gave it last time, but this time I'll give it a 3.5 okay. because we've had a lot more games with a lot better components but they're not bad i'm gonna go down to i'm gonna go down to just a a 3.25 yeah gameplay this was where i think we were both really high on gameplay on this yeah i'll I'll go back up to a a four out of five on gameplay you're going to four out of five i'm gonna go at a four out of five uh then that goes to theme the theme on this 
it's a cute little family game. And for a family game, I it's not the most thematic game I've ever played, but it's got some pretty good themes, so I'm mm. going three and a half. Uh, 3.75 for me. Okay. And then It Factor. We're a year after playing this and bringing this out to different gaming conventions and, mm-hmm. and shoving this down some friends' throats yeah. sometimes. Uh, your It Factor. How much are you still wanting to pull this off the shelf? Uh, I give it a, a 3.75 again. It's a good, solid game I'm glad we have in our collection. I, I do like it in the collection. I've cooled just slightly. I'm a 3.5. Okay. So... Let's add this up. I'm 3.5 plus my 3.25 plus 4 plus 3.5 plus 3.5. I don't I don't think that I have cooled on this game. Uh, we just played it just now as a refresher. We added the... There is a little advanced variant with a little lion token uh-huh. that you can put on your board. And when you're moving your tiles around... Whatever tile you move to the place the lion's on, you get number of points times the number of animals on that tile. And when you've, then you'll move the lion to a different empty space. And then the next time you move a tile to where the lion was, again, you get number of points times however many animals are on the tile. And that's the first time we played it with that little uh, little expansion. Um, You definitely took better advantage of than I did on that and yeah, ended up with a lot more I points for it. Yeah, and I think a two-player game, you needed to almost hurt yourself to come back. Uh, and, and I know it was hard to do that, so mm-hmm. I understand that. Yeah, I I focused a little more on the old-style gameplay where I was just trying to group my herds together. You were t- definitely taking more advantage of the lion points than I should have because I thought, well, it'll m- make more importance for my herds to be together. But then you really pulled away with those points. So next time we play, if we play with the lion uh, variant, I will definitely take better advantage of that. So... Presentation, I was at a 3.5. Last year's score, I was at a 3. Mm-hmm. You were at a 3.75. Uh, and last year, you were at a 3.5. So you've gone up. Really? For components, I was. Uh, I did a 3.25 now. I was at a 3, so I've gone up just slightly on components. Um, you put it at a 3.5. You had it at a 3.75, so you dropped that slightly. Mm. Uh, gameplay. I had it. Uh, I did it as a four on this episode. You did it as a four. That's down from a four and a quarter and a four and a half from us, respectively. Okay. Theme wise, um, I'm at the same three point five this time and last time, and you're at three point seven five both this time <laughs> and last time. And then our it factors are both down a little bit. Mm-hmm. I went from a four and a half down to a three and a half, and you you went from a four and a half down to a three and three quarter. Okay. So, last year, my score was a 73. This year, I've got it a 71. It's dropped two points. And I think that's understandable. It's a year after we reviewed it, so we're looking at the it factor. My it factor is kind of falling just a little bit. Sure. Then your um, original score last year was at an 80, and you've dropped down to a 75. But neither one of us wants to kick this out of the collection. Yeah. Love having it in there. It plays... A pretty good variety of skill levels mm-hmm. and um, uh, in, in interest levels. Yeah. And honestly, I, I think that's right about what I think it sh- we, we should be at. Um, obviously, we've cooled off on a little bit from the original uh, first recording last year. We were super excited about this game. And I still like it. I, I still got a really solid score. Um, just it's not the new uh, fancy nice game. Um, but still a good solid game. So yeah, I'm still happy with my score. All right. That's Savannah Park by Michael Keesling and Wolfgang Kramer, published by Capstone Games. We don't know what to call this segment right now. Everything else has to do with 417 and nothing really sounded good for a look back or a reminiscing. A year, or a a, year later. A year later. So if you've got a good title for this segment and you listen <laughs> to us, help us out. But thanks for listening. And once again, have a happy holidays. And we'll see you in the new year. Happy new year.